Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics. This lecture is entitled Ring and Twisted Ring Counters. Common point of confusion between people studying shift registers for the first time and counters for the first time is confusing the functionality between them. Counters count, shift registers shift. And the basis of a counter is basically it advances to a recognizable sequence. Okay. Triple zero one, double zero one zero, double zero one one. What am I doing? I'm counting from one to two to three. It's a recognizable sequence. Or as a shift register, it's just passing data back and forth based on whatever those inputs are. So that input could be random, therefore your shift register should also have random outputs. That being said, I can potentially use a shift register to advance to a specified next sequence. And how you do that are these two methods with a ring and a twisted ring counter. Okay, the ring counter. Basically, what I've got on the left hand side is a positive edge triggered serial in shift register. I'm using the last output, so it's technically a serial in serial out shift register. And basically, if I have data on that and I take that last serial output and put it back to the input, it's forming a ring. So whatever it was on there is being shuffled out and shuffled back in and shuffled out and shuffled shuffled back in. So say for example, I initially had the following data on it, 0, 0, 0, 1. The first clock pulse comes along. What happens is Q3, which was a 0, gets off. It gets back on to Q0. Where does Q0? It goes to, goes to Q1, Q2, Q1 goes to Q2, Q2 goes to Q3. Next clock pulse comes along. What happens is basically everyone's shifted right 1 and Q3 gets back in the indoor. Third clock pulse comes along. Everybody's shifted right. Q3 gets off, gets back on the indoor. Okay, next clock pulse comes along. Everybody shifts right. Q3 gets off, gets back in the indoor. Do you see what's going on here? It's basically I'm advancing from, basically I'm, I'm playing this game, who's got the one? The fifth clock pulse comes along, what have I done? I'm recycled back to that initial state. And I could do this game over and over and over over of who's got the one. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of advancing to the next sequence and it's recognizable. The reason why it's recognizable is because I am programming data in there. I'm taking that who's got the one, who's got the one, who's got the one. I'm putting data in there first. And what are the rest recognizable states? In this particular case, there are four recognizable conditions. Basically, I have zero, I'm reading from MSP to LSB, Q3 to Q0, 0010, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And what do I do is I recycle to the top. So it's not really a counter in the fact that I'm counting technically, in this case, is 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 4, 8, 1. And it depends on where you are in that sequence. You could be counting 1, 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 4, 8. So it's shifting that 1 through. And the problem is, is a ring counter doesn't work unless you have something on it. Could you imagine starting a ring counter with all zeros on here? What's it shifting around? All zeros. So you have to have something on a ring counter for it to work. Additionally, what if I had all ones? It wouldn't work because 1, 1 looks like every other one. What if I had, however, 1010 on this? So you could still get some potentially unique states through there. However, it's not the who got who's got the one game anymore. It's the who's got the ones game. So whereas a twisted ring counter, you don't have to have anything on a twisted ring counter. It's kind of the same thing as a ring counter. And if we look at our diagram on the right hand side, a twisted ring, by the way, is sometimes called a Johnson counter. And they're especially handy because you can kind of generate a waveform to test some simple combinational and potentially sequential logic circuits. What you do, let's say here, I have all zeros on this Johnson counter stages. It's still a serial in, serial out shift right, shift register. What's happening though is I'm taking that serial out and I'm inverting it and sending it back in. Okay, so if I did have all zeros on there, first clock pulse comes along, I shift it right, I invert what Q3 had on it and shift it back in. What happens now? 
I shift it right, I invert what Q3 had on it, shift it back in. Third clock pulse again, so I shift it right, I invert what Q3 had on it, shift it back in. You guessed it, shift it right, invert what Q3 had on it, and shift it back in. Now here's something neat, is now we've, we were all zeros, we fill it up to all ones, what are we gonna do? We're gonna shift it right, invert what Q3 had on it, shift it back in. Basically, we're emptying it out. Shift it right, invert what Q3 had on it, shift it in, shift it right, invert what Q3 had on it, shift it in, and you get the picture. We get back to zero, back to our initial state. So with a twisted ring or a Johnson counter, we've got eight states there. We went from, actually, yeah, we do have eights because we're counting that initial state quadruple zero to, okay, so I'm writing these again. I'm writing them MSB to LSB, Q3 to Q0. I go from quadruple zero, fill it up to quadruple ones, empty it out. What I'm doing, I'm coming back to quadruple zero. So I've got eight states for a twisted ring Johnson counter. What do these waveforms look like, however? So look at, in this particular example here, I've got a pulse of one followed by a pulse of zeros. I've got that same pulse of one followed by zeros, but it's offset. Same pulse of ones followed by zeros, offset. Same pulse of ones, offset. So let's look at how these timing diagrams work for a ring counter and a twisted ring counter. The first and easiest one, who's got the one, the ring counter. So it's a very simple game of who's got the one. First clock pulse comes along, Q0's got the one. Second clock pulse along, comes along, Q1's got it, then Q3, Q2, then Q3, and it's back. That was with an initial pattern of zero, 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 one. And we're playing that game, who's got the one all the way through. What if I initially loaded a ring counter with a pattern one, 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 zero? Well, the game is just becomes is who's got the zero. You got it, you got it, you got it. Now you got it again, you got it again, so on and so forth. And something like this right here is super handy for those dumb active low encoders. What you can do is basically who has the zero, only one of them has it at a specific time. For example, right now, only Q1 has the zero. And if I was to apply the waveform Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, which requires an active low input, which input am I asserting? That one and that one only. And I could come up in this particular case, it's an encoder. It would encode the number 4101. It's a binary encoder. It's recognizing the presence of an input, outputting an appropriate code for that for that condition. Twisted ring counter waveform. What does it look like? Like I said, it's waveforms that are offset. And unfortunately, when I drew this thing, let's say that is time zero. It was all zeros. What is being shifted? We're shifting right. Everybody's still shifting right. What's being shifted in? The inverse of that Q3. What is being, then we shift right again. Everybody shifts right. What's being shifted in? The inverse of Q3. And what you get is these offset waveforms, which you could potentially apply to some combinational logic circuit. And that is, again, a great application for these twisted ring counters. How many states will this thing eventually run through as we go through it? Well, here's here's one, two, three, four, five. So we filled up. Now we're going to empty six, seven, eight, and then we should eventually go back to our zero. Ring counter and a twisted ring counter. It's a tricky application of a shift register to potentially create a recognizable sequence of states.